Hello and welcome to another edition of the Gravestone Pros here with North Country Memorials. We are glad that you are joining us today. I have had a bunch of questions about bluing. What is bluing? How do we do bluing? Is it a chemical process? Is it a physical process? What's going on with it? So today we are going to answer those questions. Come along. got this stone done here and after we finish sandblasting the next thing we do is called bluing and to make it simple we're basically going to sandblast over these letters again with powder as we're sandblasting all of our sand comes down into here and you can see here it's a little darker than there that's because there's a little more dust there at that spot there now we have our dust collector which pulls out dust and that gives us a finer medium to sandblast with and that's what we call bluing powder. Here I've got regular sand versus the bluing powder. So you can see this is much much more fine. This is much more gritty. So this leaves a texture on the stone that's gonna be lighter than this does. As we know, stone is a natural product and the coloring on it, when we polish a stone, it's, it's just polished. It's not like it's a different color or we're adding something to it. It's just taking and making it smoother, which shows the true color of the stone and how dark it is. So if we're sandblasting with a grittier substance, it's gonna be lighter than sandblasting with the powder because the powder leaves a smoother surface. The more smooth the stone is, the darker it's going to be. So using the powder like this is a natural way to darken the letters without having to paint. There's the grit versus the powder. It does not take long to go over the stone. We go very quickly. You basically just want to hit it enough so it's changing that surface of that stone a little bit. We use the green sandblaster to do all of our bluing. The nozzle that we use on there is fairly blown out, but you don't have to have uh, an opening that big. It can be the smaller nozzle. We used to always use the same blaster for both. Now that we use the one that we have set up for it, we can use whatever we want. So a little bigger nozzle is kind of nice, but you don't have to have that. So is that already got bluing powder in it, Dad? Yep, this, this sandblaster is strictly, that's all that's in it. to you you don't really see a whole lot of difference from here i was home editing this video and i realized i never got photos of the stone with blued parts that were not inside the letter so i wanted to show you that here's a stone that's a good example it's close by my house the guys just set the other day so this stone really shows you see on that deer that darkness that's what the bluing does for you makes a big difference. It's a beautiful evening here. There's that stone. Just got set. Shows you some of the neat things you can do using bluing in your artwork and just can take stuff kind of to that next level like I was saying. 
I really think that turned out really nice. So, very happy with that. Here's another one I wanted to show you in this cemetery. There are letters on there, but they are almost impossible to see. And that's one of the reasons why I am a stickler about what colors we use. This stone here most likely was painted when they first did it, and it probably looked fine on day one. Um, but they just didn't blast it deep enough, and they painted it, so it probably looked great to begin with, but once that paint comes out, it is very difficult to read those letters. I don't know if you can even see. Yeah, you can see there's letters in there, but barely. Um, this is a stone I came across years ago, and really kind of always, when I think of why we do the process that we do, and why I'm kind of picky about what colors of granite I use, I think back to this stone. Um, many times I've thought about it over the years, and that's why I'm really picky about that stuff. It doesn't look like a real big difference here, but it really does make a difference when you look at uh, stones that have been blued versus stones that haven't. You can definitely tell uh, the difference when they're sitting side by side once they're all cleaned and done. So definitely, uh, definitely is an improvement. Uh, even like on a stone like this, we could have blued the leaves or the petals on the flower would have given that a little different color um, than, the, uh, than the stone surrounding it and really is a way to enhance your art. And it's, it's a lot of fun to mess with that kind of stuff. We don't always do it, but it is fun when we get the chance to. We do go over it with a clear coat, very lightly and quickly. We don't want to have big layers on there but that does just give a little more darkness as well. Those two things together have definitely made a pretty big difference um, on the darkness of our letters. It helps us compete with the guys that do real dark black black painting or real white painting. Um, having that little extra bluing and then the clear coat gives it just, a, just another touch of darkness, a little more readability and helps take our stuff up just that next notch. That's how we do it and why we do it. I hope that makes sense and is helpful for you guys. We don't use any kind of special pressure or PSI and everything. Um, and CFM, we're running on the compressors. All still stays the same. And yeah, really, uh, it's no big secret. It's not hard to do. Um, it can be a little more finicky sometimes. The powder will be a little tougher if there's any moisture. Definitely the powder cakes up quicker um, because it's powder and it's not, uh, not as grainy. So that's yeah, stuff to watch out for. Um, I did make sure before he sprayed that um, that it was nice and clean in those letters. I sprayed them out good. Um, it's easy to get powder stuck in there. Also, when you first start the bluing, if you get a big of bluing powder, it can stick in the letters and then you blew over top of everything, but you never actually blew those letters that are filled with bluing powder because a, uh, they never actually get changed their texture. So that's something to look out for always as you're bluing, make sure that you're not getting big, uh, big bunches in there inside the letters. Make sure they're all cleaned out before and after you're done. That's a good sign that you've hit everything equally. All right, good morning, YouTube. It is a beautiful Saturday. Five days, this old guy turns 61. Uh, I'm gonna show you a stone we do not like to paint in letters of stones. A lot of people do. My reason is, is because in less than 10 years, typically you see paint coming out. Uh, I didn't know that in the beginning. I just knew that common sense says paint is not gonna last on a stone. It doesn't last on anything else unless it's indoors. Uh, and then it's still, it's, you know, it's paint. So this family, wanted their their family name painted because it, it didn't show up it was poorly poorly done work and so i told them i don't like to paint because it's not going to last well they really wanted it painted i came and i said i will try i don't take any responsibility and i took masking tape and i masked all those letters off and cut around it fussed and fussed and then i painted little bits at a time just a light coat and let it dry another light coat and let it dry and right now uh it's got lichen growing on it so when you look at the letters they don't they don't look real good because there's a lot of stuff growing on it 
but I'm gonna have Eric just take a, a brush and brush that off and see what we got. My evaluation was somewhere in the seven to 10 year period, your paint's gonna wear off. And I used to stop every year and I still do actually, I still stop to see, you know, how did I do with my, with my work? And I, somewhere around year 12, 13, maybe, I don't know, maybe 15, I don't remember. But somewhere around that year, uh, I started to see little bits that were chipped paint coming off. This name. has so little wear on the paint. And that paint has been on there now. Now I'm saying paint, it's lithochrome paint made specific for stones as I understand it. And uh, so that paint job there is over, uh, over 25 years old, probably. Just a little bit older than me. Yeah, a little older than Eric. So my premise of don't paint, I still hold to. You don't need to. Uh, I understand why people do it. It enhances, but it's not forever. Uh, but I need to also say paint can last a lot longer if it's done in a way that's, that's got some care to it. Just to monument guys that are watching, think about this we are selling a product that is supposed to be forever and uh maybe if we use a little if we're going to paint go very light let it dry a little bit do another layer do do six seven layers uh yeah i know it takes extra time costs you a little more money uh because you're you know you're paying somebody unless you're doing it yourself but my premise is let's care about the customer. We make good money on a stone. We make really good money on a stone. Let's care about them enough that the product we give them, that it's got quality. All right, that's my rant for today. We have got lettering that's got to get done for Memorial Day. I got the man Eric back here. We're getting him all trained and hopefully I can take the rest of summer off. All right, see ya. All right, thank you for coming along with us today. Hope you enjoyed this video of the Gravestone Pros North Country Memorials. Dad and I get pretty passionate about the whole painting versus not painting topic. Uh, we've got competitors in our area that do a lot of painting and they don't necessarily do a great job of it. And so it's something we're always talking about, always on our mind a lot. So anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it educational and entertaining, all that good stuff. Do the YouTube things, leave the like, leave the comment, leave the dislike if you didn't like it. Either way, we're always happy for the interaction. We will see you all next time.